Alright everyone, how's it going? How you all doing? We are here with Dishonored 2. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, you will know that I originally said that I did not plan on recording this game. I did not even plan on buying this game because, honestly, I did not really like Dishonored 1. I just did not really enjoy the game that much. And, uh, wasn't really looking forward to this game at all. Really wasn't planning on getting it, but... Uh, one of my friends said it was really good, I needed to try it, decided to take his word on it. Uh, I'm still not expecting anything on this game, but I decided I'd go ahead and record it, because why the fuck not? And, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I am liking this music, though, it kind of reminds me of Sherlock Holmes, but, uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and play the tutorial. And I'm, uh, I'm an idiot, because I did not go through the audio and actually turn the music down. Um, and subtitles. I'm gonna set to all dialogue. Yes. Alright. So let's go and do the tutorial. Because it would probably be a good idea for me to do the tutorial. I remember training with my father in the years after the Rat Plague. Someday, he said, our enemies will come for you. Oh god. The hell? The controls are so floaty. The sounds and smells of Dunwall never change much. This is my city. My god. The... The controls are so floaty, what the hell? What training regimen does father have in store I, I swear to god, Arcane Studios. Dishonored 1, in my opinion, kind of blew. I did not enjoy that game at all. And already, not off to a good start with Dishonored 2 with the controls. This is floaty as hell. You're using practically the same engine, you're using a modified version of the ID engine. And, which is the same engine that Doom used. And Doom played perfectly, even though I didn't really enjoy that game much either. That game was good, but not great. And you got the controls all fucked up for this game. Like, what the... It's all floaty. Like, what did you do? Now, I swear to God, Prey actually looks awesome. If you guys don't know, uh, the Prey reboot, or whatever they're deciding to call it, uh, the new Prey game coming out, I believe, in 2017 is also being developed by Arcane Studios. It, that game, by the trailers, looks fucking awesome. Saw a little bit of gameplay, and it looked pretty damn sweet, too. If you guys fuck up that game, and I am excited for that game, I will fucking shit myself in protest. All right, Majesty. Let's see what you can do. Now, that's Corvo. Did Corvo talk in the first game? I don't think he did. I think it was kind of like a silent assassin. Or maybe he talked for a split second at the end of the game. For some reason, that's what I'm feeling like he did. Yes. Hurry. Oh well, why do I gotta go back? To sprint, vault the obstacle, then slide under. All right. Good. I mean, at least that's the frame nice. rate seems stable. The most part. Halt! Authorized personnel only. What, in there? What's the point of having the sign up here? It's not like anyone's gonna try to enter in there from up here. Let's see. Warning. Dangerous current. No swimming beyond this point. Oh, well, fuck you. I do what I want. One thing I did like about uh, Dishonored 1, while the, the layout of the town and everything was completely disjointed and made no sense, um, it looked really cool. Like, I really liked the setting. I liked Dunwall. It was interesting. If only I could spend every day running and jumping. Why not? 
right now to test my agility. Oh god. Come that didn't really me. You've learned well. Let's see how quiet you are, young lady. Alright, stealth. Press circle to toggle stealth mode. Crouching down and walking silently. Your visibility in stealth mode is greatly reduced. Stay behind cover and out of sight to avoid being detected. Enemies are slower to detect you in stealth mode, especially when you are farther... Oh god, hiccup. Farther away from them, above them, or at the edge of their peripheral vision in shadow, though this matters more at a distance. Stealth mode enables you to take cover under desks or tables to lure enemies away, distract them by throwing an object such as a bottle or setting an alarm or setting the alarm on a clock. All right. I want you to sneak up on me. If you can. Is that a fucking whale? All right, Corvo. I can throw him. That's my girl. Don't let me hear you or see you. Most people won't notice you if you're above. Oh God, I. Awareness. When enemies begin to detect you, an awareness meter is displayed overhead, gradually filling up. A full white meter means an enemy will search for you. A full red meter means you have been detected. Thumb overhead. No, again, without letting me see you. Oops, got spotted. All right, I'm not good at stealth. I will likely not play this game in stealth. Which is probably one of the reasons I, I did not like, uh, what is it called, the, the first game so much, because they really wanted you even to use time, stealth. An enemy will notice you, even if you're at the edge of their peripheral vision. The first game really wanted you to use stealth, although they never, even though they kind of said you could play the game any way you wanted to, really you couldn't because the combat wasn't as fluid as they would have liked to think, or as fluid as they would have liked to have believed. Crossbow. A pistol will wake up everyone in the building. Your crossbow is quiet. Oop, I missed that. Here, Corvo, where's he at? Corvo! Where'd he go? Anyway, I think Dishonored is really the the only series Bethesda has that I just really don't care for. Time for some more weapons and combat training. Let's beat each other up, shall we? Ooh, stay away. That's my daughter. When someone swings a sword at you, block. R1. Good. I can just hold it. Well done. Ow. Block with your blade. If you time your block right, God, the controls are so balance. floaty. By floaty, I mean like the controls are. Smart move. Ow. Come on. Damn it. Come on. Like the controls start responsive, like. Black-hearted killer. You can when you. An enemy out, even in combat. Damn it! Stop talking. What I mean by floaty is like it. I will move the. When you move the stick, it takes a, 
a millisecond or a few milliseconds before the camera starts moving with you. Is that the whole tutorial? I guess so. So we'll go ahead and uh, do the campaign. So uh, just to kind of elaborate on that, when I mean floaty, it's like the controls aren't like 100% responsive. Like when you play, uh, I'll use Doom or Call of Duty or even Battlefield 1, uh, controls were pretty responsive except for the camera in that game. But all the controls were responsive where uh, if you play Call of Duty or something, the second you move the, the thumbstick to move like the camera in the game, it moves with you. In this game, it takes a second. Like, I'll move the stick, and then it'll be, you know, half a second or a second later before the camera moves with me. It was also the same with the, the blocking button. For example, I would press the blocking button, it'd be a second before the character responded in the game. That's not good for first-person games to have. Uh, I don't remember... The first game having that, I don't remember the first game that well anyway, just because I didn't enjoy it much, but uh, let's go ahead and just get into the game. Why do we celebrate the anniversary of an assassination? Fifteen years ago, in the middle of a plague that nearly destroyed Dunwall, a paid killer assaulted the palace where I was born and stabbed my mother in the heart. In the aftermath, the men who sent the assassin tried to use me as a pawn in a game of power. They would have succeeded, but my father, Corvo Atano, hunted them down and cut their conspiracy to pieces. All these years later, am I the ruler my mother wanted me to be? Now, we face a new crisis. A monster the papers are calling the Crown Killer has been picking off my enemies and dressing it up like my father and I are responsible. I don't know whether to get on a ship and sail to the opposite side of the world, or to have everyone around me executed. Watch your step, Majesty. I'm not looking forward to all the ceremony today. Your signet ring. There. You're ready. Thank you, Alexei. Open the doors. All hail Her Imperial Majesty, Emily Caldwin. Loyal subjects. We're going through a difficult time, but today we honor my mother, the late Jessamine Caldwin. May her memory survive through the ages. Emily. You look tired, Father. Every year, I think the anniversary of Jessamine's death will be easier, but it never is. I wish Mother was still the Empress. I don't think I'm very good at this. You're still learning. Don't worry about the rabble-rousers, and we'll catch the Crown Killer, eventually. People are saying it's you, that these assassinations are a misguided effort to protect me. No, someone's trying to make us look guilty by targeting your enemies. I wish I could just run away from all this. Sometimes you do. You think I don't know about your nights out on the rooftops? Courage. 
The ceremony will be over soon. Royal protector and father. I should have passed a law against that combination of titles years ago. Before we begin the day's observances, we have an unexpected visitor, the Duke of Sirkonos. Ramsay says the Duke is bringing special gifts. That's intriguing. His Grace Luca Abel, Duke of Sirkonos! Mechanical soldiers? Amazing. What is this, Ramsay? I didn't authorize those things. Your Imperial Majesty and Royal Protector Corvo Atano, a native of our homeland. Sirkonus offers condolences on this sorrowful day and gifts to remind you of our nation, the rising star on the southern horizon. We thank you, Your Grace. Save your thanks, for now I give you the greatest gift of all, family. I present the lost sister of Jessamine Caldwin, your rightful Empress. Delilah called with. Impossible. My mother had a sister? My dearest niece. Hello. It's not true. My father was Emperor Yuhorn Jacob Caldwin, and Jessamine was my younger sister. At the time of her death, I wasn't ready to make myself known to you, and I was forced to leave Dunwall. But now I'm home. If you really are my mother's sister, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Little Sparrow, blackened by bad memories, I'm here to relieve you of your crown. My father's promise, whispered in secret so many years ago, is now fulfilled. Watch your tongue. Emily Caldwin is the daughter of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. Royal Protector, how naive to think you could get away with these murders. Living in my palace has protected you, but that's over. Hear me, all of you. Your rightful Empress has returned. All hail the Empress Delilah. First of her name. Arrest Emily Caldwin and her father for the Crown Killer murder. What? Okay, so we can play as either Emily Caldwin, ruler of the Empire of the Isles, trained in stealth and combat by her father, Corvo Atano. Or we got Corvo Atano, legendary royal protector to the Empress and figure of infamy from the time of the Rat Plague. Now, god damn it, okay. This game is off to a little bit of a bad start in terms of the story because that happened really quickly. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. So, this chick just walks in here, says she was the sister of the late empress, and she is she is the rightful heir to the throne. And everybody, granted, it looks like these guards are pretty much in on it. It doesn't, like, I'm sure not all of them are in on it, but it looks like at least all the ones here are in on it. But the people, the, the like, the, the population, the people, the citizens, just accepted it like it was nothing. Like, they didn't feel like they needed any evidence to prove that the late Empress had a, a sister or anything like that. They didn't question it. They just accepted it. Like, what? That seems a little odd. The writing is a little... Not starting off great on this so far. And some of the voice acting was kind of weird. It seems like... The voice acting, voice acting itself was okay, but it seemed like they just ignored punctuation on some parts. I don't know. I'm being overly... I don't know, I'm being really critical of, of this game right now. I don't know why. I mean, I just... Maybe I'm still sour from the first game, I guess. I'm gonna try to enjoy this game, but I want to play as Corvo. Um, I think between the two, there are some different abilities that they're gonna have. 
but I think there's still a good combination of new abilities and old ones, depending, I mean, no matter what character you choose. But I like Corvo. He's kind of one of the things I really liked about the first game was he was just such a, a badass, interesting character, even though he didn't really talk or you didn't even really see him, really. But And plus, I, I want to get that mask again. That mask is badass. Uh, the Emily just wears, like, that scarf or whatever. I want to wear that fucking mask again. That thing was cool. Yeah, I'm going to play as Corvo. I will cast you in cold marble. No! Corvo Atano, how handsome you are for a man of your age. And how long had you hidden the mark of the outsider? I expect it's a wonderful story. I'll lock him in the Empress's chambers, and then I'll bring him to Coldridge Prison <laughs> until his trial. My father lost it all, sent me to the city watch, one step above begging. Think I had to take your orders? Corvo Itano, son of a Zirconan tradesman. Captain Ramsey, I heard shouting. Lord Corvo, what happened? That'll be all, Captain Mayhew. No! So that's the Royal Protector's fancy weapon. What kind of sword folds in half? There's a legend in the city watch, the Empress's last resort, the safe room inside your daughter's chambers, is holding enough gold to buy an island. And they say this is one of the only two keys. <laughs> <laughs> 